Hi guys, um, I'm going to continue where I left off from the last video and I'm going to go with uh, a little bit of a background here that you guys don't know about. So the other night, which was on the 2nd of October, um, I wasn't feeling very well and uh, I went to bed early, like I had said in the last video. And I woke up uh, at one point kind of almost in a panic and I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what. So I woke up, and that was following waiting for the storm dream. So I woke up, I wrote down everything, went back to bed, woke up a second time, and I didn't know where my wife was. And I had that panic feeling like, oh my God, did the rapture happen? Like, you know, what's going on? So being half awake, confused, I just jumped out of bed, went out, and I saw her across the hall in my daughter's room. And I'm like, what are you doing there? And she's like, well, Roxanne, our youngest, had a really bad dream. And I went, oh, what happened? And she was still awake, and she told me this dream. So I, um, th I'm just going to read right off of it. So it was, this was at 2.50 in the morning. No, sorry. My other dream was at 2.50. This was around 3.30-ish. Um, my daughter said she was in a, a old rickety hospital and everything was dark and she was behind a curtain and the curtain had scratch marks on it and it was blood everywhere like handprints and scratches and she could see my wife behind it she saw the shadow of her mom and she was very panicked and she got up and ran into our room and I guess I was in a deep sleep I didn't wake up at that moment but that's what made my wife get up and go under her bed so I wrote down the words and then the next morning when after work I deciphered it and this is what I found. So hospital is a Romans 623 for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The second word I looked for was curtain Hebrews 10:20 by the new and the living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, the way through Jesus. I was looking for handprints or bloody anything, and I ended up finding blood on my hands, which was in Acts 20.26. 20, uh, Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. And then I was looking for shadow, because she saw a shadow, and it was the Psalm 17, 8. Keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. And number five, I was, I was looking, she got scared, but I found fear. And it was a Psalms 34, 34, 4. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He de delivered me from all my fears. So that was the interpretation of her dream and I went back to bed and I was like really really sad that my young daughter was getting spiritually attacked and I was actually quite mad at the enemy so I went into a very heavy duty deep prayer and I protect I asked for protection of everything from my yard my house each individual person by name even my dog <laughs> and I asked for complete coverage protection and I finally ended my, um, my, my, uh, my prayer with, God, are we protected? And that's what I asked. I said, if heaven forbid, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have said dreams like this. I said, if I'm not worthy, and I have those moments, we all do. I said, in that moment of that prayer, please take my family to heaven. If, if, I, if you want to blame somebody, blame me as the head of the family that's not doing his job. And... I know that we all go back and forth about this saved and grace thing, but I was having a moment of a father moment where I was upset that my little daughter was having nightmares. And I said, give her peace of mind. Give me, you know, I can handle the spiritual attack. So anyway, I went to bed and guess what I dreamt. So I had a dream where I heard a noise and I woke up in my dream and it was so real. It was so lifelike as if it was really happening during the day. So my dream, um, I heard a noise outside. So I walked out my back door on my deck and I had the feeling that somebody ran around the corner and I was like, 
what's going on in my head, eh? And all of a sudden, I'm going to lower the camera here. From behind me, these two wings came out. And they were like 10 to 15 feet in front of me. They were massive. And they were white. And they were huge. And they were at about, I'm 6'4", so the bottom of the wings were by my shoulders. And they were like this. And then I felt something kind of grab me. And then I heard three. And I was like 150 feet up. And then I heard it again. And then I was like 500 feet up. And then I heard it a third time. And the third one was like really big, like a. And I was so far up. The dream ended, but not before I noticed something running away from my house. And that part, I never figured out. I don't know if they were scared by protection or whatever. But the wonderful feeling is I heard an audible voice in my spirit saying, I got my wings. And that's the end of this dream. So all of these dreams have led up to this conclusion where... And I want to also stress, just because it happened to me in my dream, this is still a message he's sending me to all of you. So I believe, guys, with all my heart, that it is very close. I don't know the time. I'm not a date setter. But this is awesome. <laughs> they all went perfectly in line. So I hope this brings encouragement to some of you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Love you guys.